Hello everyone, welcome back to The Plotter Den. In this week's episode, we're going to build a fountain. So a fountain is a good piece of scatter terrain. Uh, something that you could use for all sorts of different games. Uh, but I was kind of thinking that, uh, you know, keep going with that idea of that plantation and I kind of wanted to have a fountain for the governor's mansion. Uh, and I think it would be fit in really good in Blood and Valor in a European city. Most European cities had a city center and they would have a fountain or some some kind of uh, sculpture or something at the center of town. So I thought this would be a really interesting piece to uh, build uh, and actually went into some different techniques. Um, so I wanted this uh, fountain to have uh, water features. So I've never done any water features on any of my terrain builds. So this was something completely brand new to me. Uh, and uh, I was really happy with the end result. Uh, it, I, it's kind of a little scary making a project, not knowing potentially what could what would happen at the end of it. Um, but you know, I went through it, uh, and uh, I'm pretty happy with the end result. And uh, definitely, I got my ideas uh, spinning in my head for future projects uh, in the Ponder Den uh, using water uh, features. So let's take a look at the finished product. So here's the well right here. So I was really working on getting uh, the water, and this is kind of a, like a resin compound uh, in there. And uh, you got some water effects looking like the, uh, the fountain is uh, pouring into the uh, basin here. Uh, and uh, you know, I got some foliage on here. So in the weathering of this uh, of this fountain and that's what we're going to build in this uh, in this uh, tutorial video so i'm really happy how this turned out uh got some splashing going on in the water there uh some algae growing in there and we'll cover all that in this uh tutorial all right if you guys like what we're doing here in the planet Den, make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing to the planet Den and get first-hand information when I start these kind of projects. All right, everyone, let's get down to the table and let's craft and let's paint. Okay, so this is, uh, I started uh, with some dollar store foam board here. Um, and I just kind of made a kind of a, a couple of stop sign shapes uh, and uh, used the, some insulation foam kind of uh, as the center of my fountain. Uh, and then I trimmed off uh, smaller pieces of uh, dollar store foam board to kind of make the edges of the fountain. Uh, and then I plan on using that uh, uh, insulation foam to make bricks as usual. So uh, I plan on putting it all together with tacky glue. Uh, as you can see, I kind of notched the edges. That's just so everything fits uh, snugly together. Uh, and uh, I'm trying to minimize as much gaps as I possibly can uh, because I do plan on uh, putting that uh, water feature in there. So I was kind of undecided on how to uh, build this originally. Uh, I kind of did some carving on this uh, insulation foam and kind of did a design that way. I, I, I knew which way I wanted to go with the bricks. I was going to make a larger brick and then smaller ones underneath. Um, but I wasn't sure what kind of design I was going to do on the centerpiece of the fountain. I wanted something pretty generic. I wasn't going for anything too crazy uh, and elaborate. Just showing you, I used the, uh, my X-Acto knife to cut out all those uh, bricks. So this is after I've glued it together. Uh, now I've glued those two hexagon pieces together. Uh, and you can see I texturized uh, the bottom piece first before I glued it with a tin foil ball. That's just so it gives it a stone feel to it. Um, got my old coffee tin. And actually, this is just after I was shaking up my stones. As you can see, there's still a bit of a... <laughs> A bit of a smoke going out of there uh, but that's just uh, little bits of the insulation foam so I've already shown you this but I just kind of I'm still uh, undecided of how I'm going to lay this out uh, I decided to actually make some bigger larger bricks for the bottom uh, and these are just kind of design choices kind of when I build things 
it's very organic. I just kind of just pick things up and try to fit them together and see how it works. So this is after I've added all the bricks to the top, uh, to the sides. Uh, I haven't quite finished yet. Uh, but then I also added the Insta dollar store foam board kind of like trim on the bottom. That's what I'm pointing at there. Uh, just to kind of finish it off uh, on the bottom there. I, I want it to look a little like there was a bit of a ledge there. At this uh, point, uh, I still wasn't sure if I was still going to go the way I was going with it. I was just checking how straight that piece looks. Uh, and I was really unhappy uh, with a... I cut that out with a dowel. So I ended up covering the bottom of it with... Uh, I decided to go with a brick uh, and cover that uh, carving I did. Uh, and I was much happier with the, with, with the look of the brick instead. So I decided to go this this route here. And I just glued that on with uh, that tacky glue. So pretty much this whole thing was glued together with that tacky glue. All right, so this is after I've done all the brickwork, uh, glued the centerpiece, and everything is uh, glued together here. Just kind of giving you an overall look of everything. So now I'm going to move to trying to seal the uh, bottom here where the waterscape's going to sit in. So I'm going to get use my uh, trusty spackle here, this drywall compound, uh, and I'm going to spread that all around the inside of the well here. This is going to kind of act as my uh, barrier between uh, the dollar store foam board uh, and... Uh, and, and to where the waterscape's going to be. So it kind of gives it a bit of a protection. So I'll just show you, I spread it all around. I wasn't too worried about getting into some of the bricks. Uh, I can always just sand it off afterwards. Uh, and really when you cover it with the paint, you, you really can't tell anyways. So I wasn't overly concerned. It was more concerned about filling all the cracks on the inside. All right, so this is after the drywall compound is dried. And I wanted to add a brick pattern to the bottom of this base here. Um, so I pulled out my uh, trusty dowel here, uh, and I plan on carving a stone pattern into that. All right, so this is afterwards. Uh, so I originally do the dowel, and then I move to a pencil just to kind of deepen it. Uh, and I'm pretty happy with that stone work. This is how everything is completed. Everything's dry and we're ready for some paint. So as usual, I'm going to start with my multi-surface black craft paint by Folk Art. Uh, and this will uh, finish off that sealing job that I wanted on the inside. So it'll really sit on top of that drywall compound uh, and add another layer of protection. I also wanted to just make a note, uh, make sure you let that drywall compound uh, dry for 24 hours before you add the paint. Uh, then let the paint dry for 24 hours before we're, uh, we're going to move on to any other steps. I uh, just want to show you, I added this little uh, spout feature. I actually have these, when I bid, built my church, I got a bunch of bells. And the only way I could get them is in packs of 20. So really I don't need 20 bells, but... I took the little piece on the inside uh, and it made a pretty good spout and I used that bead uh, and uh, created a spout for this fountain. I just put it on with some tacky glue. So now moving on to real brown, uh, bark brown, uh, the peblo and the camel. So all the colors that I normally would use uh, as undertones, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. I've shown that in several videos, uh, but just pointing out that I plan on covering the entire piece in that. So this is after. Now I just want to note the inside of the fountain. I only did the two uh, browns. I didn't add the uh, Peblo and the Camel. So now I'm going to Desert Yellow, Skeleton Bone, uh, Necrotic Flesh, and uh, Mummy Robe uh, for the stonework. And I'm also going to add this uh, Skeleton Horde uh, contrast paint afterwards. And I'm just going to kind of stain the stone. And I, I decided to use the uh, change the color of the base a little bit and use grays. So Necromancer Cloak uh, and Uniform Gray. We got Ash Gray, uh, and I plan on using some white, matte white. Now these are all Army Painter paints except for the Skeleton Horde. And we're just gonna kind of go past this. Uh, you guys have seen me do stonework before.
So this is uh, a kit that I bought from Michael's uh, craft store. It's in, made by Art Minds. Uh, it has all sorts of cool uh, tools in it. Uh, this is actually a water landscape kit. I'll turn it around. And this is kind of, uh, you know, I don't plan on building that lovely diorama they have in the front. But it's excellent to get uh, different components for building terrain. So it has pre-made mixed uh, epoxy resin for uh, your water feature. It's got an undercoat uh, that I'm planning on sticking in this well. I mean, it's got spray bottles for glue. It's got all sorts of uh, flocking in it. It's got little stones. Uh, it's got uh, all sorts of uh, different tools for applying all these pieces to your terrain. All right, so this is after I've added that undercoat that came with this kit. This kind of gives it a darker base to the well underneath, and it'll really help the water feature. Um, so I do want to add some plant life. So I'm going to add army green, uh, this commando green. Uh, we've got some strong tone wash, a little bit of military shader wash. Uh, and then uh, some matte black, as I like to add a little bit of darkness to the stone, add a little bit of uh, uh, depth to it. I've done that before in my stone work. So I also added a bit of green to the bottom. And in the kit, there's this, these fiber sheets. It's, it's kind of like fiberglass, but not really. It's more kind of like an SOS pad or something. But you can tear it apart, uh, and it makes for a good... Uh, algae growing at the bottom of this fountain so it gives it a good uh, uh weathered and kind of aged look to it uh added some stones and i added some gray paint right underneath where the faucet is going to be to give it a little bit of a highlight there uh and this is a close-up of that uh fiber sheet i was talking about so you can see it's kind of a uh, you can tear it apart in thin pieces and it's perfect for uh, putting this uh, kind of algae in there so this is that uh, pre-mixed uh, epoxy resin uh, for the water feature. Uh, so it's all pre-measured out for me. All I have to really do is just pour it in there. So I just kind of wanted to show you that. I also have this uh, other uh, water feature that comes with that kit. Uh, it's kind of like a paste or a glue. And you put it on like a photo piece of paper. So this is like a photo uh, paper. Um, shiny on one side, flat on the other. You just kind of add those into stripes. I used a, like a toothpick and I just added it on there. Uh, once you let it dry, it comes out like plastic and you can make that water feature. So I'll show you in a sec here. Uh, we're just going to apply that uh, resin uh, uh, epoxy inside there now for the water feature. So I'm just kind of squeezing it and pouring it in there. All you really can see is my hand. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, but we'll just uh, be a sec here. I'm just uh, squeezing it in all the way around. So I'm kind of being uh, even about it. It is fairly thick. Um, and uh, you want to spread it out evenly. So once I had it in there, I kind of just uh, picked up the, the uh, fountain and just kind of tipped it side to side just to get it all the way around. But I was pretty generous, uh, kind of went halfway up uh, the walls there with this resin. And I do plan on adding a few layers to it. So I'm just about done here. Uh, and you guys will be able to see uh, what I've uh, done here. All right, so just about done here. And you can start seeing now uh, what it looks like. So that little white paint I added, or the gray paint, sorry, right underneath the faucet, you can see it's already made it a highlight on it there. It looks like that's kind of where the water is going, going to be hit. Uh, and then I went back. Uh, in the instructions, it asks for me to pop all the bubbles. So when you pour this uh, resin out, it creates bubbles. Um, and uh, I thought I was being smart using my X-Acto blade, uh, but... <laughs> <laughs> I don't recommend that. It actually instruction that says using a piece of paper towel, which it kind of makes sense now because it absorbs the resin into the and it pops the uh, bubbles. It's actually a lot harder to pop it with that uh, that exacto blade. Uh, but uh, I kind of realized that as I went along, as you can see, I'm still trying to pop it. But anyways, you don't want it to dry because once this epoxy dries, it's it's hard as a rock, right? So you you want to pop all those bubbles before it dries. 
Unless that's the look you're going for. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna move on to that uh, water feature. Uh, and this is gonna add the uh, water coming out of the faucet and kind of getting a splashing effect on uh, where the water's hitting uh, from the faucet to the basin of the, of the fountain here. Um, and just like I mentioned before, I'm going to take a toothpick and, and this kind of actually just, you know, looks like a, like a, uh, a white glue or kind of like a paste really. Um, it doesn't look like much right now, but you want to try to make them into long strips as best as you can, uh, keeping it together on this kind of photo paper. Uh, and that's what I plan on doing in the instructions. I guess, uh, this is meant for a waterfall, which, you know, maybe in the future I could use, uh, this for, uh, as a waterfall feature, but, uh, I do plan on just using it for this, uh, this fountain. So we don't need to watch me do this. I'm just going to put a couple of strips on here. I'm just showing you how I'm applying it to that, uh, that paper. Okay, so this is after I've uh, uh, finished letting it dry. So I let that, that stuff dry for about six hours. Now make sure you let the uh, epoxy resin that's actually the water in, in the fountain, that needs to dry for 24 hours. It needs to cure for that long uh, and it'll harden. So before we start gluing stuff on there. So I'm just showing you, I was kind of placing it. I didn't actually glue it on there quite yet. Uh, I used uh, my X-Acto blade to pull it off that paper, which uh, the shiny side it makes it a little fairly easy to pull this stuff off. Uh, and then I kind of glued them onto the bottom, as you can see, into strips like that. So I just used a little PVA glue just on a few spots. Uh, the resin was kind of a little bit tacky. Uh, I didn't wait the full 24 hours. Uh, it, you know, I was just a little bit sh uh, short of that. Uh, and I was able to uh, stick it right on there. But I was planning on putting more uh, resin over top of it. So this uh, epoxy, I'm going to add it over top of the water feature. So now I've added it on there, added a little bit of glue, let it dry for a bit. Uh, and then I'm going to add uh, more resin over top of it again. So it kind of seals it in place. Uh, and then I want to add a little bit of this field grass just to the edges of the well and around some of the uh, areas around the tap there. Uh, and then I, I painted that tap itself, the the faucet itself there. I had a little bit of dry rust effect paint. Um, used this weapons bronze as kind of a color. And then I used uh, these uh, a blue in this commando green. So void shield blue and uh, that uh, commando green. I kind of mixed them together and it kind of made a, like it's a copper is aging a look to it. It turns out bluey green kind of color. So that kind of gave my age to look to the uh, faucet. So this is kind of all the features added on there. Uh, now, the only thing I needed to add was a little wetness to it. So this is a fountain and spraying water everywhere. Uh, so I went to this gloss varnish, uh, FX paint. And I hit all, all the stones and all the areas around the uh, base of that centerpiece and kind of around where the water would be splashing. Okay, let's take a look at this fountain in action. Uh, here's the battle map. We got some Dutch uh, militia taking on some uh, Spanish forces protecting a church. With the, uh, with the fountain out front. So let's get a better look at that. Uh, with all that uh, varnish we've added on there and uh, our epoxies are all dry and uh, water features. So I'm really happy how this turned out. This is the first time I've ever done water effects. Um, and you know, granted this was all pre-mixed stuff in a kit. Uh, and I didn't, uh, you know, there's a lot of ways of mixing your own home brews of this kind of uh, stuff. Uh, you can even go to the dollar store and get epoxy and, uh, you know, you don't have to buy this entire kit uh, to make water features. And that's something maybe I'll look at doing in the future. Uh, but for my first time out, I figured I'd try something that's pre-made uh, and see how it works out and, and uh, see how this whole project uh uh, works and I was really happy uh, uh, with it and I, I think definitely in the future this opens up a whole world of different possibilities of uh, different terrain pieces I can build uh, with water features on it. Alright, if you like what we're doing here in the Planet Inn, make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing to the Planet Inn and get first hand information when I start these kind of projects. Alright everyone, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.